Well, if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure you watch the previous video to make sure that you understand the basics of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to apply those to some different story problems. Okay, well, let's look at this example. It says, suppose the tips of the arms of a starfish determine the vertices of a regular pentagon. The point A, which is at 1, 0, is at the tip of one arm, and so is one vertex of a regular pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, inscribed in the unit circle as shown on the right. Find the coordinates of B to the nearest thousands. So here's what they give us. They tell us that point A, which is at 1, 0, is one of the vertices on this regular pentagon, and we want to figure out what's the coordinates of point B here. Well, it doesn't seem like they give us enough information to figure that out. But they do give us this key piece here that this is a regular pentagon. So remember from geometry that a regular pentagon or a regular of any shape means that all the sides are equal and all the interior angles are equal. So um, with this one, all these sides are equal. All the interior angles are going to be equal. That means that it also... Um, since it's inscribed in the circle, means that the vertices are on the circle, uh, means that the arcs here are also all going to be equal um, arcs. So in other words, this pentagon divides this circle up into five equal sections. So to figure out what one of those sections is going to be, in other words, to figure out what this angle of rotation is going to be, we're going to take one-fifth of 360. When you do that, you get 72 degrees. So that means it's a 72 degree rotation. So now, just to figure out what the coordinates are, I just have to take the cosine of 72 and the sine of 72. And when I do that, I get my answer, which is the coordinate, when we round to the nearest thousandths, is going to be 0 0.309 and 0 0.951. And that's your answer. Now the next one says, find to the nearest thousandth the coordinates of the image 1, 0 under rotation of negative 10 pi over 9. Now, it seems pretty simple because all we have to do is take the cosine of negative 10 pi over 9. It changes. And the sine of negative 10 pi over 9. But here's the difference between this and these other problems. These other problems, everything was in degrees. This one is in radians our calculator is set to be in degrees. So in order for us to be able to do this problem, we have to change our settings on our calculator. So let me show you how you're going to go about doing that. So what you're going to do is you're going to go um, hit the home button and go down to number five, your settings. Now depending on your operating system, depending on your version of TI Inspire, when you go to settings, it might say document settings or like this one, it might say just settings um, and go to general. So you want to go to this screen and under angle, we want to change this angle to be in radians. And hit OK, or you can make that the default if you'd like. And now let's go to a calculator screen. So now we want to take and do the cosine of negative 10 pi over 9. So to do that, we just hit Control, or hit the Trig button, and hit cosine. And we're going to put this in as negative 10 pi. So the pi button is over here, so negative 10 pi divided by 9. Hit enter, and you should get negative 0.9397, but we're going to round to the nearest thousand, so this will be negative 0 0.940. Do the same thing for the sine. This will be negative 10 pi divided by 9. Hit enter, and we get 0.342. Now, if I want to do something, if I want to go back and forth, if I want to go back into degrees, um, here's a little trick. Personally, if I were you, I would leave your calculator in radian mode. Because otherwise, if I want to go, let's say if I had to do the previous problem now, and I had to find the cosine of 72 degrees and sine of 72 degrees, I'd have to go back up into the settings, change the settings to uh, degrees, and then come back to a calculator screen, and then do what I type in what I need to which is a lot of extra steps. So here's a little trick. If you want to find the cosine now of 72 degrees, right now it's in radians. I can see that if I move my cursor over to this little sprocket, I can see that um, I can see that this my calculator is in radian mode. So I'm going to leave it in radian mode, but here's what I'm going to do. 
Well, first I'm going to show you that I'd get the wrong answer. Going back to that previous problem where we had the cosine of 72, remember that our answer should be uh, 0.309. Well, now when I do cosine of 72, I get negative 0.967. Well, that's because it's in radians. So to get the correct answer, if I do the cosine of 72, but now if you go down next to the letter G, we see this question mark and exclamation point with the arrow. If you click on that, we can find the degree symbol. So now we can tell you the calculator to find the cosine of 72 degrees, hit enter, hit enter, and we get 0 0.309. Now, if none of this is happening on your calculator, if you seem to be getting the wrong answers still, or if your um, calculator seems to still be in degree mode, uh, you want to make sure that you are not using the scratch pad. I've had students uh, change your settings, and then they go to do some lists, but they use a scratch pad, and it's still in degree, degrees. So please be using this calculator screen. And just remember now that if you have it in radians, when we're working with pi and everything else, everything's just fine. But if we want to work with something in degrees, you don't have to change the settings. We can just use that degree symbol, and you should be good. So let's go back to our notes now. So again, we found here that our answer was negative 0 0.940 and 0 0.342. So based on your answer to part A, tell whether the tangent of negative 10 pi over 9 is positive or negative. Well, the fact that the sine value is positive and the cosine value is negative, when we divide those, we're going to have a negative answer. Now, for any given value of our angle measurement, we can always tell whether the sine of the angle or the cosine of the angle and the tangent of angle are positive or negative without using a calculator by using um, coordinate geometry in the unit circle. For example, over here on the right, remember that anything in quadrant 1, the x and y are both positive. Remember with uh, trigonometry, the x is the cosine of the angle and the, sine, or the y is the sine of the angle. So anything in quadrant 1, the cosine of the angle is going to be positive. The sine of the angle is also going to be positive. But now in quadrant 2, the x is negative and the y is still positive. So here, the cosine of any angle in quadrant 2 is going to be negative, or the sine of any angle in quadrant 2 is going to be positive. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. So the cosine and the sine of the angles are both going to end up being negative if they're an angle that ends up being in quadrant 3. And if it's an angle that ends up being in quadrant 4, those angles have, so these are where the x's are positive and y's are negative. So this is going to be where the cosines of these angles are positive and the sines are negative. And lastly, let's talk about this Ferris wheel problem. Uh, the book explains this a little bit differently than the way that I'm going to. I'm just going to make sure that um, I try to make this as simple as possible. So it says, as of 2008, the largest Ferris wheel in North America is the Texas Star at Fair Park in Dallas, Texas. Its seats hang from 44 spokes. This Ferris wheel is 212 feet tall. How high is a seat off the ground as you travel around the wheel? Now, with this problem, we have to make some assumptions. We're going to assume that when you get into this Ferris wheel, that it's right at ground level, and that the distance then from the ground level to the top of the Ferris wheel is 212 feet, so that means the radius of this Ferris wheel is about 106 feet. Now, I know that this Ferris wheel is not going below the ground, but what we're going to do is we're going to use this Ferris wheel. Uh, we're going to um, put this over the unit circle. Well, to do that, that means that the origin has to be at the center of the unit circle. So just because our horizontal, our y-axis, is here does not mean that it's at the ground level. Uh, so our ground level is going to be down here, even though it's where y is going to be negative at that point. OK, so there's 44 spokes. So it's kind of similar to the starfish problem. That means that there's 44 different segments on the circle. So what we're going to end up doing is, let's say if we want to figure out the height of this bucket right here. Well, that bucket has a, the distance from the center of that bucket is 106, because the radius is 106. And we're trying to figure out what is the height of that bucket. Well, remember, to find the height of the bucket, we're going to use the sine function. And to illustrate that, let me just recreate that triangle here. Now, 
And we want to figure out, well, what is this angle? Well, this angle is going to be similar to what we did with the starfish problem. Instead of being one-fifth of 360, this case here, it's going to be um, one-forty-fourth of 360, which ends up being approximately 8.2 degrees. So that angle is 8.2 degrees. Well, this unit circle, or this circle is not a unit circle. It's got a radius of 106. So technically, when we're using that sine function that we talked about in the beginning of our notes, we would have the sine of 8.2 degrees equals the opposite, which is y, divided by our hypotenuse, which is 106. So to find out what y is, I'm going to multiply both sides by 106. So this is how we would go about finding our height of our Ferris wheel. So let's look at our calculator. So again, if I would type in 106 times the sine of 8.2, but remember this is 8.2 degrees, so I have to do it this way. So I would take 106 times the sine of 8.2, hit enter, I get 15.11, or about 15 feet. However, you might say, well, that really doesn't make sense because really this means that the height of the circle, there's this, or this bucket is really not 15 feet above the ground. It's 15 feet above the horizontal. We have to remember that the horizontal, the y-axis, is another 106 feet above the ground. So we have to add 106 to that. So in other words, for this one, 106 plus that 15 would give us approximately 121 feet. So that bucket there is 121 feet above the ground. Well, if we were to do this now for another coordinate, or another one of these buckets, let's say this one here, well, this bucket would be two segments above the horizontal, or two 44s, or one, if you reduce that, it'd be, um, if you reduce that, it'd be one over 22, times 360. So we could, or another way to do this is to deal with this in radians. Remember, in radians, 360 would be the same as 2 pi radians. So we could take um, 2 44ths or 1 22nd of 2 pi and have 2 pi over 22. So let's do that and this, let's do this one in radians. So it'll be the, we're going to look at this part over here, so to find out what y equals, we would take 106 times the sine, and this time, like I said, we're going to do this one in radians. So 2 pi over 4 times 2 pi, or 1 pi over 22 times 2 pi, would give me 2 pi over 22. And then we have to add to that the height above, or the horizontal that we would have, so another 106. And when you type that on your calculator this time around, you end up getting 136 feet. Now I know you might say, well, wait a minute, it just went up 15 feet. Does that mean that we can always add 15? No, because these graphs that you're going to be looking at are not linear. So to find the next one, we'd be looking at this angle of rotation. which if we left this in radians, there's a nice little pattern that's going to happen here. Because if we left this in radians, this is now going to be um, three forty-fourths of two pi, or six pi over uh, 44. And then if we add in that 106, this time around, we end up getting 150 feet. So again, you can see that we're not constantly increasing by the same amount. So please don't get that impression. But again, we could have done these in either degrees or radians. I just wanted to show you both ways. Well, that summarizes this uh, lesson here, talking about the sine, cosines, and tangents. So there was a lot of information here, but hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of how to find some of these values. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.